84 children shot dead by Israeli soldiers in the last five months. Now, for much of the last five years, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict had been creeping towards a compromise, a solution that included a stop to soldiers shooting children and terrorists blowing up innocent civilians. Then, last September, that prospective peace came tumbling down after a provocative act by the man who's now been elected Israel's Prime Minister. So the prospects for peace are now further away than ever. Nowhere is that more evident than every Friday on the streets of Ramallah, where Palestinian kids confront the Israeli army. Every Friday, straight after noonday prayers, they come to Nablus Road by taxi, by bus and on foot. Armed with slingshots, these men and boys have come to throw stones at Israeli machine guns. In many ways, it's like a football match. Someone has the coffee franchise. Someone else is selling the local equivalent of a meat pie. The media arrive and take up positions. Ambulances arrive too. Tension rises. But before the action starts, it's possible to walk across the front line. And there, Israeli soldiers are preparing too. Their job, to protect a few hundred Israelis who live in a fortified settlement just up the hill. It's hard to know if the battalion commander, Colonel Wimmer, has his heart in his job. Who would when the job includes shooting children? Colonel, you have a three-year-old son or a daughter? Son. We're going down to this junction. There's going to be a riot there, and your soldiers are going to shoot against those children. First of all, my soldiers are not shooting against children. If we have to use weapon against uh, the riots, we, we will use non-lethal weapons, like rubber bullets and like steam gas, and yes, those non-lethal non weapons could kill sometimes, but the soldiers that will shoot this rubber bullet have a clean uh, order how to shoot it. Just on 12.30, a young boy runs up and readies to cast the first stone. And uh, here you see the pioneer. The young kid coming down. Yeah. That's the start of it. Within half an hour, the confrontation is in full swing. Rocks and Molotov cocktails are answered by gas and rubber-coated metal bullets. It is quite pathetic, really. Mothers cracking stones for children to throw at the Israeli army. Others cart the ammunition. Others, the drinks. The 20th century saw maybe 10 wars fought over this turf, so I suppose it's not surprising if some in Ramallah consider they have seen it all before. Kids with slingshots against Colonel Wimmer's bulletproof jeeps and indeed his tanks dug into the hills behind. It's pathetic, it's futile, but it's near certain that some of these children, some of these young men will this afternoon die. In the past five months in these occupied territories, Israeli soldiers and police have shot dead 84 children, 17 years of age and under. Rubber bullet? Motor. 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 Yes, it is a rubber bullet. They don't scare us. Why should they scare us? We have stones and they are cowards. If you were an Israeli and someone was throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails at you, what would you do? First of all, I'm not a Jew and I'm not an Israeli. You should ask them. This is not an appropriate question. This is our homeland. They came here. They are the occupiers, not us. The homeland is the so-called West Bank. 
Israel captured this territory in 1967 and in outright defiance of the United Nations has occupied it ever since. Over the last 30 years, they've built over a hundred settlements here that are considered both illegal and provocative. 4% of Israelis live in these settlements and they are 90% of the problem. But this is not even part of Israel. We believe it is. Maybe uh, legally, uh, now it's not. But uh, it's part of the Jewish people, Israel. For settlers like school teacher Boaz Columbus, the Bible teaches he had an ancestor here more than 2,000 years ago. Hence, he's entitled to settle here today. Neighbour Mencia Schwat feels the same yes. way. We really came here to live in peace. But look, this is not your land, it's not even your country. I'm not going to go into international law here. Jews can live anywhere in the world. Why can't we live here? The Palestinians are so repressed by the Israeli occupation that the weekly battle in Ramallah has become a principal outlet for their frustration and rage. This afternoon, the first live fire was a single shot from a Palestinian position. This was a well-recognised signal to the crowd that their side was about to open up and so they should take cover. The Israeli practice is to meet live fire with live fire, but in spades. In a recent Friday war, the Hamouda family lost eldest son, Rayed. He was shot in the head as he tossed a Molotov cocktail. Now his grieving mother cares for the daughter he left behind. We went to the hospital, which was full of people. A nurse came and told me, you are the mother of a martyr. Your son has been martyred. I was so shocked, I started shouting. Until this day, I am sick with grief. Do you know this name, Colonel? Rahed Hanude. I don't think I've heard that name. He's uh, a young man who was killed here uh, a short time back. What do you say to his mother? As I told you before, I have a son too. And any man or child that get killed in any in its side, I have a compassion for him. But if anything, the problem is now worse than ever. Israelis have just elected a new hard-line prime minister, Ariel Sharon. To some, he's the butcher of Beirut. To others, he's the father of the settler movement. With Sharon's election has come another spiral in violence. More dead Palestinians, more dead Israelis. Haven't you got to find a solution that doesn't involve bullets? We didn't start this war, we didn't ask for it. We even now, we're not asking for it. We're not initiating anything. I have enough soldiers and enough uh, uh, fire force to capture uh, the whole Ramallah and uh, to take any position that they want. I'm not doing that, not because I can't, because I don't want. By now, Nablus Road had become a dangerous place, and not for the first time, a Palestinian ambulance is hit. But in the same place, there's the ambulance. Where is, there is an ambulance, there is no shooting. The live fire causes the kids to cower, but not submit. They cheer on their side. Older Palestinians, though, have another priority. It may seem irrational to you, but these people do believe that to die here is an honour. Do you believe you will go to paradise if you are here? Come, 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 people, come, 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 come
I'll be a martyr. I'll go to heaven. The entrances and exits of virtually all Palestinian towns are controlled by Israeli troops. Sometimes as a security measure, sometimes to punish the Palestinians, the Israelis choose to lock off the entrances and create what amount to jails for all Palestinians. Closing a village is a very simple process. 20 minutes with a front end loader and the task is complete. What does happen to your business? Uh, I'm just going to close it. But have you asked the soldiers? And this if... is feed 10, 10 families. It's 10 workers, feed 10 families. Look, if the Palestinians were doing to you what you're doing to them today, wouldn't you be reacting the same way? You've got them locked down like animals in a cage in there. You always, it's, it's what you call the question of the egg and the chicken, what comes before. We locked out the cities after, and only after, this started. The shooting, the uh, bombs, only after that, we locked out the cities. When murders happen, that's when we close them in to defend ourselves. My mother's entire family was wiped out in the Holocaust because they had no way to defend themselves. Palestinians had nothing to do with it. Right, but I'm saying now as Jews, we have to defend ourselves. Locking down Palestinian villages serves to inflame Palestinian passions. And it's that very policy that is part of the cause of events like today's. We want our freedom, our liberty. We don't want the Israeli army here. We want to have back what was taken from us. By sunset, it was all over. Now, why is it over now? It's like a ceasefire. We're finished. The firing is over. It was quite surreal, as if the ref had blown the whistle for full time, declared a draw, and then invited everyone back for next Friday. Do you think you'll see the end of it in your lifetime? First of all, uh, I hope so. And we hope this peace will come in our lifetime. But I know that it won't come by itself. Bullets should beat stones any day. But Israel is losing this war because it is losing the respect of the rest of the world. A way out is to give the Palestinians a homeland. A homeland being what the Jews themselves were denied for centuries. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9Now app.